All right, so here we go. And we're going to get started on this gown project, which is my silk version of um, the robe and chemise or the chemise a Lorraine based on Marie Antoinette's um, favorite new dress of the 1790s. Um, this is a pattern. I'm using a Laughing Moon um, pattern. This is the first time I've used a pattern by this company. So this is going to be interesting, but just to give you some uh, a little um, idea of what we're doing. The dress part here will be the fuchsia pink silk, the sash, the lighter blue silk, and this is a lighter uh, quality silk, and the double ruffle and the sleeve ruffles will be made of this um, beautiful uh, silk, uh, this beautiful lace that I bought. So um, let's get started. We'll take a look at the pattern, and you know what? I'm going to go get one of the other patterns that I usually use um, just to show you um, kind of the difference um, in styles of pattern. But both pattern makers um, do base their patterns on actual 18th century um, clothes. So let me get the other pattern and we'll kind of use that as a reference as well. And uh, I'll be right back. Now the clothes you've normally seen me wear as Mrs. Q have all been made with patterns from J.P. Ryan Company. And here's a couple of them here. On the left is the pattern I used to make the um, blue lace-up jacket you see me often wear. And um, on the right is the pattern that I used to make the uh, lacy, the uh, flowered dress with the um, lace collar that I also like to wear. Um, J.P. Ryan's patterns, um, I'm used to using them and I've been able to alter them to fit. Keep in mind that all of these patterns are made to fit over stays, not over a natural body. So that makes it interesting when you're trying on all of these things as you're making them, um, that you have to have your stays on. What I've done, and you'll see later in a video, is that Mr. Q has helped me make a form of my body out of uh, duct tape, and we stuffed it, and I can put my stays on around that, and it actually smushes um, that that model of my body into the same shape my body has in the stays. And we'll be using that for some of the fitting parts. And then, of course, every once in a while, I have to put everything on and try it on myself. Um, so I know how to use the J.P. Ryan patterns. I've had them altered. I know how they fit me. Um, this is the first time I'll be using a Laughing Moon pattern. So I'll be doing some things initially to make sure the pattern is going to fit before I make a cut of that very expensive pink silk taffeta. So let's get the pattern out and see what we have. Okay, so let's see what we get when we open up this giant pattern package. And um, if you've been sewing modern patterns, and I've been sewing since I was a girl, the first time you see one of these, it can be quite shocking because we're used to those nice uh, um, tissue paper patterns. They're very easy to follow and the instructions are very clear. And this is really quite different. The first time I made an 18th century dress, it was a few months long project because I had to completely relearn sewing and how to assemble garments as they assembled them differently in the 18th century, especially the way the bodice fits. Of course, you're wearing it over stay, so it fits differently and the sleeves are set in differently and the shoulder seams occur in a different place. Now, I don't know if that's true with this dress yet as I haven't really looked at the pattern that closely, so we'll see. So let's see what we get. Here's the front. And the version that we're going to make is going to be a combination of what you see here. So we want the highly gathered bodice, the big skirt, and the shorter sleeves with the ribbons. I'm not sure yet if I'm going to make the low neckline or the high neckline. It depends on how low that neckline is. I'm also not 100% sure about the bodice because I'm quite small and a very highly gathered bodice could um, be too unshapely for me. So as we get into the construction of the garment, we'll, I'll make that decision. Now, one of the things I noticed about this pattern that is really nice is that it comes with this booklet that shows you everything you need to know about assembling your garment and cutting out the pattern. So here right in the front, it shows you the different versions. So this is the version A with the more fitted bodice, as you can see here. And this is the version I'm planning to make if all goes well, which is the more gathered bodice. Here's the low neck, the high neck, and you can see all the gatherings. I am not going to make a train because I'm gonna be wearing this outside and I don't want it to get all filthy. So no train, it'll just be a straight skirt in the back. Now, 
the next page really is the first page we're going to be using for our instructions. And this is the page that lists all of the pattern pieces and the different ones you need for the different ways to assemble your garment. Um, this garment, I notice, can be assembled in many different ways. You can use a highly gathered bodice and a highly gathered skirt. You can do a straighter bodice and a straighter skirt, a straight bodice and a gathered skirt, a straight sleeve, a puffy sleeve, a three-quarter sleeve, a full-length sleeve. So you can assemble this garment in many different ways, um, which is really kind of nice because many of the other garments I've done from different decades are very strict in the way the garment looks and the way it can be assembled. So we have a lot more um, creativity with this, this dress or this gown. So I'll be going through and marking off everything I need. I'll highlight the pattern number piece here and then I'll highlight it over here. After I do that, the next thing is to cut out the pattern pieces. Now, if you've never seen one of these, these patterns can be quite intimidating. They are, one thing I really like though, is that they are made of very heavy paper. So unlike those tissue paper patterns, they don't, um, they, they don't tear and, and are destroyed after you use them once or twice. And a couple of these patterns I've used multiple times because they're really, um, they hold their quality for a long time. I'm just going to open this one up a little bit. As you can see, I haven't opened these yet, so I don't know what pieces are where. And here right on the top, we have a lightly gathered bodice back, which um, we're probably not going to be using. And I see there's the straight sleeve up there, which we're also not going to be using. But it gives you a look at what these patterns look like. And right away, if we come up here, you can see all these different colored lines and these little um, numbers. And the pattern sizes are the numbers. So you find your pattern size and then you cut out your pieces according to the numbers. Another thing, the pattern size for these patterns um, has nothing to do with the size dress you wear in a modern dress. So um, just to give you an example, in this pattern, I think I am, let me look, I am a size 16. And in real life, if you've seen me, you know I'm really small. I'm not a size 16. I mean, I'm not a, I'm not a two or a four either, but I'm in the middle there. So um, your pattern size is not necessarily going to be your real dress size that you wear, your clothes size and modern clothes. So um, I'm going to stop here because it's going to be quite time consuming to find all of these pieces and cut them out. And then I will be back after I've done that.